Hey everyone, welcome to another video. In this video, we're gonna provide a tutorial in how to do reverse geocoding in Python. And by reverse geocoding, we mean identifying geographical location information like city name, province name, and the different uh, geographical um, information based on geographical coordinates, based on latitude and longitudes. So in other words, we want to apply or cross-reference a set of shape files and polygons um, on the data for coordinates so in this example let's say we have a latitude and um, longitude and we want to see where this uh, this coordinate exists and um, get different degrees of geographical information from that next is looking at the step-by-step -step guide on the code and we're gonna apply it on a sample data as always um, all the code, the, the sample data, everything is available for you to download and access and customize based on your own need. Uh, you can find the information and the link uh, for that in our blog. As you can see, that's our blog. Uh, the information is in the description. The link is there. And in this video, I'm going to provide a step-by-step -step guide in how that works and how we can customize it. So let's go over the code. So again, of course, you can. Um, that's a Python script. You could um, have once you have the link, you can um, download it and upload it in any platform that you're comfortable. Uh, for simplicity, I'm using a Google Colab platform here for online editing. And the first step is packages, initial settings, um, my data is a set of coordinates that essentially i don't know where this day this coordinate exists but i'm i'm interested to get their city name their province name and their different um, degrees of geographical information uh, based on that the first thing i'm gonna do i'm gonna import the data and import the packages so these are the just general packages that i need uh, the two specific pa packages that we're gonna use the geographical gis type packages are um, Shapley and Joe Pandas. So these are the two ones that we're going to use mostly and these are a couple of functions that from those libraries we're going to use. So that's application of Joe Pandas and um, Shapley function as well. Step two is uh, yeah, once we have the packages then we import our data and if you want to have a look at the sample data we have here it's just a set of coordinates and you could um, have these coordinates comma separated or however you have in your data and here I have it comma separated so in next step because I, I, I need them in two different columns of uh, longitude and latitude uh, what I'm gonna do is in the next line I separate the, based on the comma to two um, column and now I have my latitudes and longitudes now just a quick footnote that here if you're um, applying some uh, calculation like this you always need to be careful about not rounding up your um, coordinates decimals here uh, I'm using this type of coordinates that's the type of coordinates um, that you can get just by copying for example those coordinate information from Google map um, and in here I used float 64 so it's actually it's, it doesn't round up it's all good although in here you may uh, on reviewing the data you may um, um, guess that it's actually rounded up but if I actually look at the data value I see no that's exactly um, all the decimals all the numbers I want so it's not actually rounded up just a side note um, something to have in mind to not find an um, error at the end of your output next step is getting my shape file so for reverse geocoding, you need to have some sort of polygons. That polygon information most likely is stored in some sort of shapefile information and you need to download the shapefile or um, essentially read the shapefile in your Python um, code. In this case, uh, the example that I'm working, I'm actually uh, looking to do the reverse geocoding in using the uh, geographical information in Canada. And I'm using the Statistic Canada Census Information um, shapefiles. But again, how, however, shapefile that you have should work. Um, let me show you the example of shapefile that I have here. So I'm, I'm using a Statistics of Canada Census 2016. Um, again, any other census um, would work similarly. That's the link, and you can go and have a look at it. That's essentially um, the source of information. And once you download, 
any shape file um, that's the example of the, the the content of so you're gonna most likely download a zip file in this case the content of that uh, zip file is a um, couple of contextual information the main thing is these four files uh, most likely usually there are these four type of files the most important one is this uh, uh, .shp and .shx uh, but uh, you need um, all four here and that's based on the name of the shapefile information so this shapefile include the information on different polygons and uh, so I'm actually now this is the use of geopandos that you see uh, GPD is the um, the name for geopando that I chose here I, I read the information from the file that I have in my Google Drive I put it here um, what the next step is one thing that again depending on use your use case uh, and your data you need to always have in mind what type of coordinate you have so your shape file coordinate should match your data coordinate right so the the type of coordinate that I have here is this it, this is actually um, in uh, GIS uh, language that's the type that I, I have EPS um, EPSG 4326 or there are other names for this as well but essentially that's the type of coordinate you can get directly from Google map right uh, but there are other type of coordinate as well what I want to make sure is that this is the same type of coordinate that also exists in my shape file now this type of shape file that I download actually they have different um, coordinate type so what I do I um, do this uh, function do this transformation to change them to a normal coordinate if you will and there is more contextual information uh, from this um, link that you can review uh, more information on that solution but essentially now let's uh, take a look at the polygon data right this is the polygon data I have now have and again based on any shape file um, that contextual information could be different the main important thing is this last column geometry which actually have the polygon information that essentially tells us within each polygons uh, what's the different geographical information for that polygon so in here in Canada we have um, census subdivision um, and then we have census division we have province names we have um, if it's a metro if it belongs to a metropolitan area we have the census metropolitan area name and again that that's one type of um, uh, polygons there are in the case of Canada and Statistics Canada you can find other types when I either break it down in, in uh, smaller polygons or bigger poly polygons but that's the example that I have it gives you a good variety of information that not only I can get the city name or metropolitan name I can get different degree like CSD like census subdivision census division province name all those two sort of things and again of course based on um, your, ex your case of shape quality this could be very different based on where, which country, which type of world, and which um, degree of um, geography you're looking at. Next, let's test the method. And in this case, we use the points function, and points function, it, um, it is from the Shapley package. Uh, this is the case that I want to see whether this point exists in the CST Toronto so census subdivision Toronto whether this point exists in there or not and in this case again uh, it's um, a little bit tricky that you need to have the longitude first and then lat latitude but that's essentially the function we're going to use and you're going to see next how I use it to scale uh, if depending on however many of the coordinates you have you're going to get it in a simple format this is just for testing once you run it you're gonna set the true false um, uh, result so in this case it's true because I actually get it from here as you can see it's clearly this is the longitude and latitude and it's from center of Toronto as an example and um, since the subdivision Toronto is the central part of the city or metropolitan area of Toronto so in this case that's true of course next the next step what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna specify uh, data is going to be the name of the my final data frame uh, which also includes the coordinates information I'm gonna uh, include the column names of those contextual 
geographical information that I want. I want, let's say, city name, province name. So I have, I want to get the metropolitan name, the census subdivision name, province, all other different, these are different levels of geographical information that I have. So I'm gonna just um, initiate and um, name them here. And then um, next step through these four loops, I'm gonna go over each um, coordinate and locate them and then get, grab those information and fill them. So uh, basically I go over um, different each coordinate, then based on each coordinate, I'm gonna look at whether that coordinate exists in uh, which polygon. Um, so the, the second loop is, uh, is over different polygon information and if um, it and that coordinate exists within that polygons then we're gonna get the information for that polygons that we need and these are uh, the same information these six columns that I chose based on the column I chose six of those the information here that I need, needed and uh, there you go so um, once you actually once I get the information then I go to the next um, I essentially I go to the next coordinate because once you find so this break it gives you a little bit of uh, efficiency because um, as long as in this case each coordinate can only exist in one polygons there is no overlap in my example that's why once I find it that okay that this coordinate exists in this polygon then I don't need to worry about the rest of polygons I go to the next coordinates that's again of course there are other ways of doing it but that's a very simple way of uh, having the coordinates cross-reference them to all polygons and get the information that we want and then the object the final object is data that's our data frame you can you see that uh, we have all the information that we want this is the coordinates um, this is a the first example interestingly there is no information that means the most likely that coordinate is not in Canada at all it's probably in some other country or it could be in, in invalid um, coordinate so this is not a way for you to get those invalid um, coordinates or out, outside your, your scope um, so these are examples that you it's actually valid and you get something uh, this is for example it's in Vancouver greater Vancouver and you get the, all the information that I want at different de degree um, at Moncton as you can see other examples and I have some examples when they are actually seems to be outside Canada and let's see we can actually check uh, one of them let's and grab this one and go and see where this um, coordinate exists and as you can see that is in Portland US actually so that's of course outside US and the shape files that are used it's a um, breakdown of Canadian region so of course that's not included there that's why the result was um, nothing it was missing so there you go, that's, um, and then I store the result, that is our tutorial, hopefully this is useful for your use case, see you in next video.